Good, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, whenever you happen to be listening. This is the Scientific Adventures of Beard Man. Today we're going to be looking at physicsclassroom.com concept builder. Um, the topic is under the topic of work and energy, and the title of the concept builder is energy ranking. This concept builder gets us into the idea of conservation of energy. Remember, we've already learned that uh, work can add energy to a system. Remember that energy isn't just coming out of nowhere. It is coming from something like chemical energy, like I ate my cereal this morning and that gave me energy. And so I can use my muscles to lift something up to give it mechanical energy, like gravitational potential energy, or to throw something like a baseball and give it uh, kinetic energy. Okay, so when uh, when our system is increasing in energy, it's coming from somewhere, it's still coming from some sort of energy. Um, it's just not mechanical. And that when our system loses energy, that it's going somewhere, it's not just disappearing, it's becoming thermal energy. But today we're going to focus on situations where neither of those is happening. There is no work disappearing. And there is, uh, there's no work adding energy to the system, and there's no energy disappearing to thermal energy, okay? Um, remember, it's not really disappearing. It's just becoming a different kind of energy that we can't see so clearly. So today, we're going to look simply at situations with, like, no friction, no air resistance. There's no way that uh, friction is going to happen causing... Uh, causing energy to become thermal energy, and we're not, we don't have an engine, we don't have anybody pushing anything that's going to uh, create, uh, come from chemical energy, add to the energy of our system. Therefore, in these problems, however much total energy there is, mechanical energy, in other words, kinetic plus gravitational potential energy, you have to still have that same amount of total mechanical energy at every point through the situation. Okay, in this you'll see like a pendulum swinging back and forth. In reality, yeah, there's a tiny amount of friction in the rope, and so eventually a pendulum will stop, but it'll keep going for a long time. That's why they were used in, in grandfather clocks. Uh, we'll have a roller coaster where or things sliding across little ramps like a roller coaster, um, where they're uh moving and we're going to pretend there's no friction. That's a little bit less reasonable. Roller coasters do have a uh, fairly significant amount of friction and do come to a stop fairly easily in a fairly short amount of time, as opposed to a grandfather clock, which might go months still swinging back and forth. Um, but the idea is that our kinetic energy and our gravitational potential energy uh, may not always be the same. The kinetic may increase, but if the kinetic increases, it's happening as the gravitational potential energy decreases. So the total of the two of them is always equal. Uh, it is going to be important to remember as we go through this that the kinetic energy is based on the velocity. So a bigger kinetic energy means a bigger velocity. And it's also going to be essential to recognize the gravitational potential energy gets bigger when the height gets bigger, when it's farther above a reference frame. Okay, Through all these examples, the mass will stay constant, will be on Earth the entire time. So really the things we need to connect is the kinetic energy has to do with the speed of the object or velocity, and gravitational potential energy has to do with the height. So we're going to use an example here of a roller coaster. We can see that this roller coaster starts up here at position one. It travels downhill. As it travels downhill, let's draw it this way. As it travels downhill, we'll put that as a permanent little marker. We see that the kinetic energy is increasing and the gravitational potential energy is decreasing. Now, why would I say that? Well, when it's up here at the top, it's at its highest point. That means that the gravitational potential energy is a maximum. That's how lots of roller coasters work. They do some sort of work on this first slope over here, but uh, then once they get to here and that work is done, we've given this gravitational potential energy, it'll just use that same energy 
to carry it through the rest of the roller coaster. Okay, and as it drops down that first hill, we all know it gets faster and faster if you've ever been on a roller coaster. That's because the gravitational potential energy is decreasing and it's turning into kinetic energy. Okay, that's how we usually think of this. In reality, you could say the gravitational force from the Earth is doing work on the car and therefore it's turning into kinetic energy. It's, it's going faster. Um, but we're going to look at this from a conservation momentum standpoint that because the gravitational potential energy is decreasing, that means the kinetic energy is uh, increasing. Okay, so when we get to the bottom, we could see that, uh, sorry, let's go back up to this point. We'll say the gravitational potential energy, whoops, energy is max. So that's the greatest gravitational potential energy. And then down here at, at number two, this is the lowest point we have on the entire roller coaster. So that means G P E is at a minimum value. Okay. So if gravitational potential energy is at a minimum value, that means it's as small as it can get. Well, if the total energy isn't changing, and we have the least amount of uh, gravitational potential energy here, that means that this place must have the most kinetic energy. Okay, and same idea up here. If up here the gravitational potential energy is at a maximum, well, that means that our kinetic energy must be a minimum here. Because again, the total amount of energy at any one of these positions is equal. Okay? And so if, if the gravitational potential is the biggest here, that means we'd have to have the smallest kinetic um, to get to the same total. And if the gravitational potential is a minimum here, then it would be uh, the place where most of the energy has to be kinetic because very little of it is gravitational potential. And then as we compare the other ones, we can see that three is higher than four. Okay. So this is the, so three here, this is the second highest uh, gravitational potential. And therefore it would be the second lowest kinetic. And this one is the second, uh, second lowest uh, gravitational potential, so it would be the second highest kinetic. If we wanted to put these in order of kinetic energy, actually let's start with gravitational potential energy, that's what it does on the uh, website. So if we want to do gravitational potential energy, then the one with the greatest gravitational potential energy is one because it was the highest. The second highest one was three. Okay, I guess we could put a a greater than here. Three is greater than four. Four would be next because four is the next highest. And then two is the lowest. And so we put two over there. Remember, kinetic energy is just going to be the exact opposite order. So if, if our, our uh, number two spot down here had the lowest gravitational potential energy, then since the total is the same, two has to have the most kinetic energy. Okay, and since four had the next least amount of gravitational potential, four must have the next most uh, a kinetic energy. At three, there's very little kinetic energy because it's pretty high. And then at one, it's way up there. It's got a ton of gravitational potential energy. That means it's barely going to be moving at all. The last section of uh, the concept builder asks for where it's going to have the biggest velocity. Well, remember, kinetic energy and velocity are linked together. So if spot two has the most kinetic energy, that means spot two has the most velocity. It's going the fastest. If four is next for kinetic energy, then four would be next for velocity. Okay. If three is the next one for kinetic energy, three would be the next one for velocity. Because remember, velocity and kinetic energy are tied together. It's the only thing that's changing in the kinetic energy formula. So the reason it has more kinetic energy here is because it's going the fastest. Okay, so really all you have to do 
is in these problems is look for the order of height. One is the highest, three is next, four is next, and two is the lowest. So that's our order of gravitational potential energy. And then we just switch that order around, vice versa, for kinetic energy. And that uh, tells us the amount there. Once again, that's because the total amount of energy at any one of these locations is equal. Let's just do one last thing and throw in a couple numbers here. Just make up some numbers. Let's say it started out with uh, a, a gravitational potential energy of 9 and a kinetic energy of 1. That means the total is 10. So when we get down to the bottom here, now the kinetic energy might be 9 and the gravitational potential energy 1 because it's at the very it's near the bottom. It's not all the way at the ground, but it's near the ground. And so we'll use ground as our reference frame. And so it's got 1 and the kinetic energy is 9. Well, the um, as we get to these ones over here, we'll make up some numbers to just get our idea across. So this one is a little bit higher. Sorry, my, my uh, pen is skipping on me here. Apologize for that. Uh, gravitational potential energy. So this is a little bit higher than, um, than spot two. So maybe this one has a three gravitational potential energy and the kinetic energy therefore would have to be seven. And all these numbers you could say are in joules. I'm just making up numbers. A roller coaster car would have far more energy than three and seven joules. I just wanted easy numbers for you to get the idea here. Okay, so kinetic energy and gravitational potential. This is a little bit higher than four, than spot four. And spot four, we, we said it had a gravitational potential energy of three. And here we had a gravitational potential energy of nine. So this has to be in between those two because, um, because its height is in between the two. But it's a little bit closer to one. So we'll just say its gravitational potential energy is seven. And then since they have to equal 10, the kinetic energy would equal three. Okay, notice every spot has a total energy of 10. And you can see the same relationship that we started out with spot one being the most energy, then three, which has seven, then four, which has three, and then two, which has just one. And then you can see, it's a little bit easier to see that the kinetic energy should just be reversed. Our highest kinetic energy was nine. That was a spot two. Next was four with a kinetic energy of seven. Next was three with a kinetic energy of three. And next was one uh, with a kinetic energy of one. And then keep in mind the speeds are just basically synonymous with the kinetic energy. All right, I hope you have a lot of success in that and you're able to complete the energy ranking concept builder and you learned a little bit about how it is compared uh, or it's using the concept of conservation of energy to determine uh, the different rankings. Thank you very much. We'll see you next time on the scientific adventures of Beardman.